Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to take a look at a series of freeware scenery by the White Arcades on FlightSim.to. The White Arcades produced four different theme park packs. Uh, one is Six Flags Over Texas at Arlington and that's the first one we will visit. The next one, Bush Gardens at Williamsburg, Virginia. And then we have Cedar Point Amusement Park at Sandusky, Ohio, and also uh, King Island, Kings Island Amusement Park in Cincinnati, Ohio. And the thing that caught my interest about these is that they're all fairly small. In fact, all combined, these amusement park packs were 270 megabytes unzipped. So that's fairly efficient scenery, and we'll see, this is my first time looking at them, we'll see where they are worth it. Uh, it is, of course, freeware. I mean, when I say worth it, I mean, um, does it add to the landscape? Uh, I, I expect it will, but uh, yeah, so we're going to take a look, and I'm headed over to Arlington first out of Fort Worth, Texas, and I'm in the Cauldron Rafale. So here we go. I've chosen this plane because I noticed that there are a lot of things for sale on the marketplace, and... If I didn't already have this plane, uh, this would be my pick. It's only like five, six bucks uh, now that it's on sale. In fact, its original price was fairly affordable already. Uh, so, yeah, at that price, it's sort of ridiculously good. <laughs> I, I don't know, it's a fun plane. Uh, if you do VR, it might be troublesome. I read some reviews that said that they had trouble with it in VR because the head would clip through it. It's such a narrow cockpit. Uh, but, Otherwise, it's uh, sort of a interesting, unique sort of plane. And I should probably raise those flaps. It's not a very fast plane, as you can tell. On the bright side, it doesn't go to 45,000 feet, so we don't have to worry about that bug that Sim Update 7 introduced. This was, in its day, a trainer for a faster racer plane. But for sightseeing, it's pretty darn good. Again, not in any way affiliated with the developer or anything like that. Is it just me, or is the VFR map very different now? What, what are all these patches? Sim Update 7 has been really rough, I have to say. Um, I know there are people who uh, note that Sim Update 5 was worse, but I don't think it was worse for me. There was one update where I had to reinstall the whole program. That was bad. But, uh, as you might expect. But, uh, yeah, overall, this has been the most annoying for me. Uh, what with not being able to get past 45,000 feet after just getting the free F-18 as part of the Game of the Year edition, as well as uh, the F-104. Uh, that was a huge blow to my enjoyment uh, because, heck, I wanted a rocket plane, basically. So, uh, F-104 was the closest I was going to get to that, and I couldn't sufficiently rocket plane it. And the F-15 and F-14 from DC Designs are affected as well. I hear there are problems with the DC-6, though maybe only on Xbox, I'll have to check that out. I haven't. Maybe by the time I take a look at it, there'll be an update for it anyway. Hopefully, I didn't buy the DC-6 from the Marketplace, thankfully. The Marketplace updates take forever. I have to say, the photogrammetry has been loading worse in this update as well. As far as I can tell. Landing with this is a trick, though, because <laughs> the nose is so long sitting in the back seat here. I generally am in favor of sitting behind the wing, though. It feels very sporty. It's like a GB, but not as dangerous. I don't... I have coordinates for the Six Flags Over Texas, but it didn't let me input them in. To create a custom waypoint. I don't know whether that was a bug or whether I was doing it wrong. I don't usually use coordinates like that. 
I wish there had been a custom point of interest marker for the theme park. Uh, I think it's over there. Total size of just this Six Flags over Texas pack was 37 megabytes. And basically, I will be in awe if this is looking really good because that's really efficient. After all, we've got a whole world to cover with points of interest. Some of these packs sometimes are like tossing in a gigabyte just for this kind of area because they're not very well optimized. But uh, well, I mean, you can see uh, some shortcuts have been made here and there with the polygons, but overall, this is pretty good, right? I mean, yeah, this is impressive for. In some of the buildings, yeah, they're uh, a little bit blocky, but for what it is, I'd rather have it be lightweight and remarkable. It is remarkable. It's certainly a sight to visit. I'd rather have that than have something heavyweight and uh, be constantly wondering whether I should leave it in. Woo! Uh, it's a Superman thing, huh? Anyway, very nice. Uh, we'll take a look at the other three theme parks and see how they are. I'll fly different planes in each. Okay, this time we are in the Coronado C-170B. A nice little plane for this particular kind of purpose. And we are at Williamsburg, and there was a point of interest marker for this one. Maybe I just missed the one for Arlington. So we're, we will head towards it. It's not too far from the airport. I'm just taking all the nice casual planes out for a spin. Making sure they work in this update. Really, making sure they work in this update. <laughs> that's, what, that's largely what I'm doing here. Aside from enjoying the scenery. I mean, I remember... Uh, for the Mooney Ovation, or some updates, they didn't have the fuel switcher working, fuel selector, so that we could only use the fuel from one tank. That was a problem. So you can see the location of the theme park in relation to Williamsburg. Or I should say amusement park, maybe not a theme park. Gotta be careful about these distinctions. I still wish we could just get a hotkey to hide the HUD instruments and then bring them up again. Still sort of wish they would add that to the base game. Would be useful. But yeah, let's let them fix the problems first. Okay, I think I see it over there, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Definite signs of roller coasters over there. Oh, it's got some over here. All right, let's uh, sweep from this side over to what appears to be the core of it over there. There's this purple yellow one. But all in all, it's better to have it than to be missing it, I feel. It's weird when uh, people, like I, I do stream flight sim occasionally, and I do take requests for flights, and people might request to fly around a particular location like Williamsburg and see if uh, some of the landmarks that they're familiar with are here. Well then, you know, if it's only gonna cost me 20 megabytes or so to have that landmark, uh, maybe it is a bit bigger. It's a uh, 48 meg, actually. Unzip. But, you know. People will want to see the sights. So, okay. That is the Williamsburg one. Uh, let me try Cedar Point. 
and we'll switch planes again. Okay, so the game has crashed twice when I selected that cedar point marker there. So that is the location of the amusement park, but when I selected the marker, the game crashed. So we're not going to select the marker, we're just going to try and fly there. Let's see if I can actually go there or whether there's a problem with the cedar point package. I'm going to try this Microdian Aerodynamics MX-8. It is a freeware plane and a nifty one at that, so we'll see how that goes. Wow, the weather is not great over here. Okay, well, things are materializing. Um, okay, uh, yeah, this is a nifty plane for around here. This is just the default livery. There's better liveries than this one. But for freeware, it's really nice. Last cockpit, though. No, oh, I thought I was taking off from K Sky, not not this airport. I must have missed. Well, this is all very gloomy, though, for an amusement park thing. But apparently, real world weather. Though I've heard that there are weather problems. Why is K Sky a question mark? Okay, well, shoot. You know, forget real world weather. We need to take a look at things here. Um, there we go. Let's just go with that for now. Oh, there's the amusement park. I'm just wondering about the airport now. Yeah, taking a look at the description. It says, remove nearby K-Sky airport facilities to mash updated satellite imagery and added basic handcrafted buildings for new sports park on site. Okay. So I guess there's no longer an airport there and that's what happened. Well, all right. Well, this one's looking pretty good. And there's obvious custom buildings here and everything. Power tower. I mean, again, considering the size of the pack, this is pretty good. There's sort of a photogrammic tree-esque roller coaster here, which uh, I, I don't need. I don't need these things. I don't know what they are for. Hopefully those will get updated away. Alright, so from inside here. Lots of rides on this one. Lots and lots of rides. Busy place. Okay. So, yeah, just don't use the points of interest marker. I don't know what's up with that, but it crashed my game, so. Take that for what it's worth. The last one is King Kings Island Amusement Park in Cincinnati. Okay, and for this flight, I've decided to go with the stock, the new Game of the Year edition PC-6 Porter. And this is my first time flying it. And it's not really uh, the most appropriate thing to fly in this neck of the woods. Uh, and I just hate all the liveries that come with it, but, uh, yeah, these are garish liveries for this plane, but, alright, anyway, uh, the interior is not bad, though, again, uh, considering we were getting it for free, uh, so let's try it out, and, first of all, it looks like we've got bad weather around here again, so, clear skies for now, and off we go. Shouldn't take a whole lot of distance to take off with this. Oh, this isn't even a usable runway, is it? Whatever. That's what the PC-6 is for. 
I think I see the complex over there. The thing about new scenery is it sort of shimmers a little bit more than other things. And I think that's that over there. Let's find out. Interesting interior. Cargo space. This looks like the kind of thing that they do skydiving with. Is this a skydiving plane? Yep. That's definitely the amusement park over there. Again, the importance of having these amusement parks is because they are so visible. So, yeah, you could see it from miles away, at least from the height. Uh, we've got some weird patchiness on the ground here, though. That sometimes is indicative of two types of scenery fighting against each other. I don't know. There's way, probably way too many trees around here. Now, I've got the Bijan Hibashi tree pack, so maybe there's just not exclusion for the trees in this area. I think there's a lot of stuff fighting with each other on this one. Uh, just this particular one. The other ones seem fine. We'll come around and take a cockpit in cockpit view of the place But yeah, this one doesn't seem to be working out quite right. I guess this is a photogrammetry area At least I see photogrammetry trees, you know, that's why they're blocky Rise themselves are fine and again custom buildings I see Alright, but yeah, this uh, because this photogrammetry here, it's a little bit comp more complicated and laggier than usual. And some street polygons here and there I see sometimes. Okay, but there we have it. So that was a mini tour of the amusement park freeware packages from the White Arcades. I'll put the links in the video description as well as the link to the MXA plane that I flew at Cedar Point, uh, in case you're interested in that one. So yes, uh, freeware making up for some of our missing things and I'll take a look at some of the other stuff and highlight the more interesting packages in future videos. But with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.